Hey guys, if you're interested in videos on giant monster caterpillars like this, uh, check out our Keys Mods YouTube channel because we're breeding monster sphinx caterpillars like this. Okay, so, interesting. The, uh, one of these caterpillars turned from green into uh, the dark form between instars. So, we found five caterpillars of the banded sphinx, and they were all probably third instar and they all had this green color form. I'm filming. It's all right. And they all look like this. This guy's about to molt to the next instar. But cool thing, one of them molted into this really cool dark color form when it hit final instar. So I do not know why it changed color like that. We had... Um, they were all green when we found them. But now this one's got this really cool dark color. It's got like yellow and black stripes. And it's got these white, you know, the white bands, which are pretty pretty common, but that's what they're supposed to look like right here, guys. This final instar, banded sphinx, caterpillar, eumorpha fasciatus. Very healthy. Uh, let it go a little too long without feeding them. So I went and cut some new food and when I was cutting food, a couple things happened. First thing, I found on the pond apple nearby a really cool little larva of um, this little, um, oh gosh, what are they called? It's a fruit piercing moth. They feed on a Nona species. And uh, Gonadonna nutrix, that's what it is. And so we're going we're gonna to raise a bunch of them. Actually, I've got some caterpillars in here. We're going to set those up here in a minute. But while I was picking uh, leaves or cuttings for my container full of uh, banded sphinx caterpillars, let me pick these two guys up off the ground here. You got five total. I've got three, four green form and one of these dark colored forms and we get a we have to feed these guys real quick um sphinx moth caterpillars guys eat a lot if you didn't know that and i'm just gonna empty that out but while while we were while i cut these stems of this uh prim, primrose willow and when i kept i'm still finding them on the stems there are eggs all over them so Check out that egg right there, guys. So I'm going to pluck him because I've got a little collection of the eggs going. And um, they're actually on the bottom here. All of these little leaf pieces of leaves all have eggs on them. But a female banded sphinx must have found this little plant and went freaking nuts on it, dude. It laid a whole ton of eggs, which is really, really cool. So why is it so bright? All right, there we go. There we go. There it is. Banded Sphinx egg. Eumorpha fasciatus. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and stop the video. I'm going to clean out this container and then we'll feed these guys. Set them back up. Okay, so... Um, there's probably more eggs on here. I just took a cursory glance and pulled at least, I think, eight or nine Sphinx eggs off. We're going to deal with those in a minute, but I'm going to put my new cuttings in here. Um, what we're going to do is we can now put our Sphinx caterpillars in this container. Um, we got five of them. I don't know, like in a container this size, I wouldn't put any more than five of these big Sphinx caterpillars in one container. I think it's five is 
already hard enough to feed. This was two days ago that I had these in here and you can see what they do in two days. So this thing is gonna be full food. I suspect within the next, oops, within the next um, 24 to 36 hours, this will be, these are things will all be sticks. It'll look a lot like this right here. So um, that's good for these guys right now, but now I'm gonna deal with the eggs. Okay, so we have our primrose here with, I'm just gonna add this back in just as is. There's probably, I don't know, there's gotta be at least eight or nine in here. And um, I'm just gonna add this in, back into the container. And then, and of course you can see that some of these stems are the ones that were laying on the bottom that had caterpillars on it. Oh, there's a spider. Kill a spider, kill a spider. Okay, good. Sorry. Sorry if you're offended, but spiders do not kill my caterpillars. All right. You'd be surprised with a little spider like that, how much damage it can do to a container like this. All right, now, trick is I've got to add food to these guys, to this one. So I'm just going to add these to my big container here. I went and cut more food. I'm going to show you that in a minute. <laughs> lovely, lovely caterpillars. Okay, I got my new cup full of plant. It's starting to wilt because it was out of water a little too long, but it should come back. It's in water now, and I'm going to get it inside of this airtight container because it's you know this thing sweats like crazy there's no airflow just get all these stems pushed down Okay, guys, I um, think I'm done playing around with my caterpillars. We did a little bit of a photo shoot, and now it's time to get them back onto their, into their happy place. Come on, homie, let go. Echo. I suspect most of these caterpillars will be pupating either to tomorrow or the next day. So I shouldn't have all that much more to feed them. It is a chore feeding 15 very large sphinx moth caterpillars for sure. I got one crawling on my hat. Hey, guy, come here. <sighs> Silly little monkey. All right, here we go. Let's get you there. Silly monkey. All right, now they are ready to go. I'm going to close this up, and we'll show you the next stage. In okay, so we've got a couple caterpillars left. Got one of our big dark form got a couple green guys but the cool thing is even though we've got a few of those we've got a bunch of pre-pupil larvae including this pink one here which is pretty cool pink caterpillar all right then we've got one that's sort of like in between green and pink. Then we've got like a straight green pre-pupil, couple of straight green pre-pupil caterpillars. What I'll do is I'm just gonna put those down here underneath the paper towel, let them kind of work their magic in there. Let me just sift through. Oh, we got a few more. 
Oh, yeah. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. We got one, two, three, four more pre-pupil caterpillars. We'll put them down here. Dude, I'm sorry. Let me just take a look at him. He is pretty freaking cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> pretty freaking cool pre-pupil caterpillar of the banded sphinx. All right, any more? I bet there are. Watch. Let's see. Yeah, we got one more here. And then we got what looks like a pupa. Oh, we just pupated. Okay, that's, that's a little touchy. This one's still soft. When the pupa is still soft, it's very fragile. So I'm gonna put, I'm actually gonna put the pupa right into here. All right, now just gotta kinda look through one last glimpse. Oh yeah, there's another biggie. Big dog, look at you. Mm. All right, we've got at least 12 pre-pupil caterpillars inside here. We're gonna close that up. We're gonna clean this out and finish out our group here, guys. We're almost done with the Banded Sphinx. Okay, it's been a few days now, guys, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to remove some of these pupae that have formed. They should all be alive. I'm guessing they're all alive. Yeah, they don't feel like there's any. Ooh. Okay, yep, we got some some squirmy sphinx pupa. Should be squirming, a little bit of squirmy action going on. Got four healthy pupa there. And what I'll do is I'll just use this paper towel that's on the bottom here to put the new pre-pupa ones, which I'm gonna get here shortly. But these I'm gonna put in another container. Bear with me. This is a container of moth pupa that I already have ready waiting on some of these IOs that are in here. These are IO moth chrysalis pupae. So is that little guy right there. He didn't, looks like he didn't form fully. That's not a good sign. Anyway, I'm gonna put these in here and they have the paper towel ramp to crawl up on when they emerge. So, bingo, ready to go.